All right, guys, I'm back over here on the shaft, and we're, we're going to just go ahead and get this OD finished up. So this will probably be kind of a short video. I'm going to get this turned, which we don't have a whole lot to come off. I think i got about 20 or 30 thousandths to remove down to 2 and 7 sixteenths. So we're going to take it down to 2.437. Probably give myself about a thousandth tolerance there. And once I get this turned and we get this finished, then I'm going to set it back up for the steady rest. And I may be doing a modification on that steady rest in the process, so we'll see uh, what goes on with that. And once we get this turned and get the steady rest set up, next video is going to be all about the square thread over here. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to get a measurement here to see where I was at. 460 is what we finished it at, so we got about 23 thousandths to come off there. So. I'm going to try to split it, maybe make two cuts on this to finish it. I'll go ahead and touch off and we'll just take ten thousandths on it. So that is the CNMG 431. I'm trying to recall what insert that is. That's one that my buddy Mike gave me. Now I want to say that's a Mitsubishi insert. But it, it's got the, uh, I don't remember what the chip breaker designation is, but you can see it's pulling a real tight little curl. The edge has a very sharp feel to it, and that's why I chose that insert. I didn't want an insert with a nice round cutting edge on it. It creates a little bit more tool pressure and wants to rub more than it does cut. approaching our stop up here and I was going to point out you can see I've got my tool kicked at a little bit of an angle that's actually one notch on the multi fix nine degrees I don't have to come up to a square shoulder and it gives a little bit more clearance so chips don't try to get in behind that insert and start rubbing the finish all right let's crank her back down see where we get a little bit of rubbing none of it okay okay let's get a let's get a measurement finish turned out great looks really good it's nice and smooth by the way I was running a 5,000 speed rate I'm making my finished passes here. Okay, we got 47. We got 47 there. Looks like we dropped a couple of tenths on this end here. It's 446 and 6 tenths so it looks like we're we're losing about a half a thou across the, the cut here I'm just going back and I'm just double checking like I showed you before this is my when you want to make your finished cut you got to really be sure that you, you dial in and what you want here whether you want to leave it over some or try to nail it. So I'm dialing in nine thousandths. And what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to cut a little bit on the end right here. And I want to check it.
I'm plus a thousandths on what I wanted. And I think the reason why is because after that first initial dialing in, the uh, this nut down here, I, I snugged it up just a tiny bit because it was it was a little too free moving, and this is a this tightens it up. So trying to move in, it was a little more stiff than it should have been. So I think I lost a little bit on the the end feed there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it one more thousandths. Get that out of the way. Okay, got it a half dial over what I want to finish at, so that's going to work right there. I'm just going to let her, let her cut. Hopefully this will be it for me. And we're on size. Just gonna come right up to that first thread and touch it. All right, let's see what we got. Looks like we're right where we want it to be. All right, I'm seeing that little bit of taper down. So most of the way down here, I'm at 437, which is great. Down here, I'm around 437 and a half. 437 and a half, and then right here on this tip, on the very end, I do a little bit extra polishing right there. We're almost uh, 438 right here on the very end so not bad we got less than a thousands taper down this thing right here so i'll be doing a little bit of polishing with my uh, probably some 220 just to kind of bring this in down a little bit it doesn't have hardly any warmth at all to it and then i need to polish this up some and make sure that this fit is still on size and we'll get a chamfer and then start setting up a steady rest. Don't need much. It's about a half a thousand selling that in. I think the rest of that I can just kind of hit it with Scotch Bright, really. Alright, I think we're there. Maybe a few more tents. Yeah. I'm about seven tenths, so I got a little bit more to go.
Okay, we're getting somewhere now. Looks like four tenths. And the reason why I'm reading the tenths, by the way, uh, two and seven sixteenths would be 2.4375. So you want to try to make sure that your, your fit is going to be under that. I feel a little bit of warmth right there, so it might, might lose a tenth right there. See the little glitter? That's like the little fuzziness that is on the surface whenever you're turning it. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and make a little modification to the steady rest for the for the Monarch lathe here. So this is the steady rest that I had already shown in the video we, we used the first time around, and this is the clamp. Really cheesy looking clamp that somebody had cobbled together. You can see how it's bent. All the years of pulling up on it, I, I should have fixed that a long time ago and I just never did. You don't really think about it until you actually need it. So this is the one that I made whenever I adapted the Victor Steady Rest over to the Monarch. This is the clamp that I made out of some flat bar and I doubled it up and got a 5 8 stud right there. And I use a nice heavy duty 5 8 flange nut with that. So I pulled that off the other Steady Rest mount. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill this out. That's originally, that was a half inch. And it looks like the uh, that's the original hole size. It was for like a half inch. But what I want to do is set that thing up and drill it out to uh, accept the 5.8 stud through there. It ain't going to take much. It's already drilled a little bit oversized. So, And I did check it. There is enough room to use this clamp with the steady rest. Uh, it's not going to go all the way down flush on the top or anything like that, but it will go down enough to uh, hold it. So I wouldn't say that this is going to be a permanent fix, but you know how that goes. I just want to get this, I want to get this fixed up good enough so that I can finish out this shaft and get it done. And then this might be another project for another time. So we're going to use the horizontal board mill. We're going to use the board mill over there, set this thing up to drill this hole. All right. And by the way, I just, I got YouTube going. I'm watching the polls right now for the presidential election. All right, just showing you, you got the steady rest just roughly clamped down up here on the table, just showing you how I'm doing it, really. I, I have not got it indicated yet. It's not square, but I'm just pulling down on this bottom plate. This bottom plate seems to be pretty square. And I had to shim it, put, you know, put some little blocks under it. And yeah, getting the clamp down, using a little gooseneck clamps and some step blocks. I had to clear the bottom. There was, <clears throat> it wouldn't sit flat, so I, that's why I had to put the blocks down there. So next phase, I'm just going to stick an indicator right here, run it back and forth, and get this square. And then I'll find the center of that hole and then start drilling it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is get this thing indicated nice and square, parallel with the table. I'm gonna assume that that hole that goes through there should be nice and square with the plate and the steady rest there. It's just for a stud to go through so it doesn't really make a hill of beans what, what it's doing, the drill will follow it. So we're gonna get it indicated anyway. So I've got my steering indicator set up on the Noga and I've got an attachment on here to make it sort of like a right angle perpendicular to where the indicator is. And I'll show you, that is the stair indicator attachment 671. 
and it just slides on here and it's just got a little arm that pivots and it works good for stuff like this you can also use a test indicator right here just the same I like trying to use dial indicators as much as I can just because they're easier to see and you should be able to get this very close just like you can with a test indicator so I'm going to run the table in we'll just come on around to our first zero and we'll move it down we'll use our rapids put it in gear first Okay, so that's a little bit high. Let me go ahead and grab a hammer. Let's see if we can get it. A little taparoo here. Alright, so I went too far on that. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. There we go. Probably getting to be close enough right here. Say that's close enough. We'll give it another check. All right, so it looks like we're within two thousandths. Yeah. I think we'll leave it right there and we'll come over here and get this hole indicated next. So I think to indicate our hole, our easiest option is going to be the coaxial indicator. <clears throat> that way I can put the dial face wherever I need to, probably up towards the top or on the side like that. find a little straight arm for it and we need the little torque arm the notches in this little case are really deep so <laughs> gotta have a tool or something to get them out there so see if I can get her moved in Come on. arms ain't quite long enough tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take that rod out till we get the the needle up inside the hole there okay there we go Alright, that'll work. I'll get you a better shot so you can see the indicator working. So I just lined that hole up with that drill bit. That's why I had it stuck in there earlier. And I just, just eyeballed it, you know. And I should have got it pretty close. It looks like up and down we're, we're off a little bit side to side. 
is not too bad. There. Now we need to I think go that way. Oh yeah. I think we gotta go up just a little bit more. I'm just cranking the knee over here. I don't know if you can actually see that far over. Pushing a little at a time, just watching the needle. That's not too bad. We need to go back. I think that's going to be close enough for what we're doing, just drilling a hole. So I'm going to call it there and lock her in. All right, guys, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and start drilling this thing. There's the, there's the clamp and the stud. Looks like it's going to fit in there just right. All right, I'm going to bring the steady rest over here. I'm just making sure that the ways are clean. There's no grit, any metal particles there on the ways. get the uh, now we need the clamp and the nut or the stud and the nut I mean all right let's see how this thing lines up oh yeah there we go I think that's gonna be plenty of thread the only thing I hate is that get that counterboard there it's a little bit off so I think I'm going to go ahead and just put a, a washer on there to make sure that it's pulling flat. Yeah, it's going to be much better. Put 
probably position somewhere about there to give us some clearance right here, you know, our carriage and tool post. Now I can, yeah, I can really pull on it now. That other, that other one that was on here, every time you go to tighten the nut up, you could just feel and see the little clamp plate on the bottom just bending. So I hope this really helps add some rigidity to this little setup right here. And next thing we'll do, let's go ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and get the, the steady rest set. And then, then we'll be ready to start boring and threading. I'm running the tailstock back up. Just going to clamp it right there where it was when we did all of our turning. And let's see. Go ahead and loosen those. Just touching right there. Just touching right there. get a little oil on that thing. All right, there it is. Now we'll, we won't be running any fast RPMs whenever we're doing this. We don't want to create a bunch of friction right there, but that's going to be the setup. So on the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll get to our uh, tool bit and start doing some threading. We'll see you then.